Hello and welcome, I'm Bert the Stormtrooper and today we're going to be taking a look at the Radio Shack Electronic Sea Battle and I love this game and I've been wanting to do a video on this game for a couple of reasons. Uh, first reason is because this is the one that I had as a kid. I did not have the actual Milton Bradley name brand Battleship. I had this version that you see in front of you right here. So I wanted to make a video for that reason. Another reason is because there is hardly any information online for this there's no instructions there's no reviews there's nothing of the sort so for anybody out there that has this game and then possibly not have the instructions this will help hopefully help you out be a little bit of an instructional video on how to program this because it's actually quite easy to program so this came out in 1986 catalog number 60-2193 it was released in the 86 catalog. It came out around Christmas time of 85. I know because that's when I got it. And kind of a uh, uh, weird, funny, odd story about that is that I remember taking this to school. We had a game day where everybody could bring games to school. So I brought this to school with me and I got teased for having the quote unquote knockoff version and not having a real battleship, even though nobody that I knew had the actual Milton Bradley battleship, uh, they're still going to make fun of me because I had this version. And it's it kind of sad because in the reality of it was, in 1985-86, when this came out, the only version of the electronic battleship up to that point, there was only two versions that had come out, uh, and it was still the one with the sliders that was just simply a shift register. Talking Battleship would not, or, or Talking Electronic Battleship would not come out for another four to th three or four years until 1989. So this version was actually way more advanced than what Milton Bradley had to offer at the time. But you know how it goes with kids. I always kind of had a sour taste for this game after that. Uh, and never really appreciated what I had and never really realized uh, how much better than what was available at the time this was. But I appreciate it now and I am forever grateful uh, to my mom for getting this. So again, yeah, this came out in 1986 and this uh, retailed for approximately $30, which is actually, again, cheaper than the Milton Bradley version. Taking a quick look at the packaging, we've got the gray grid uh, box, which was very telling of Radio Shack products of the time. We've got a picture of the of the actual game itself and a cool little naval battle scene going on on the side there. And of course, our catalog number. Uh, down on the bottom, we've got uh, some descriptions of the games within and it tells you what you've got you know the the objective of the game and uh, you've got up the, you got four games that you can choose from uh, which is really cool again this was a very advanced system for the time and it had four different games products uh, packaging our product shot on the side there on both sides the top is going to look just like the bottom did and then of course nothing on the back so there we go that's pretty much it for the box bringing the instructions in. It's just a black and white sheet and it's just gonna tell you how to place the batteries. It takes four AA batteries that are placed along the bottom of the game. It tells you how to turn it on, how to program it, uh, the different games that you could do. So you've got two version, two traditional games. Uh, you've got one computer game where it's you against the uh, computer. Uh, the traditionals are two player games. So you've got two traditional two player games, two salvo two player games and two live action two-player games and it tells you how to set up the fleet how to program for each and that kind of thing the only thing that this does not do um that i'm gonna i'm gonna say for the milton bradley version the 1982 electronic battleship which was available at the time of this had come out with the instant programming where all you have to do is pick a pre-selected pattern from the book and then you would just punch in the letter and number code for that pattern this doesn't do that you have to program all of your ships in but it's very very simple so let's go ahead and go to the board and take a look at that and here we have the board itself and right away you're going to notice something that none of the milton bradley versions ever did and that's they actually close they actually have a lid and you can close them up the same thing again the milton bradley didn't do this was more advanced than that of the milton bradley version in so many ways and this was one of them is the fact that you could actually close this up you didn't have to take your board apart uh to put it away so just kind of going all the way around so you can see what the board looks like and then you can just open these up and that would slide right into place and you're looking at the player two side of the board right now so you've got your uh 10 buttons uh a0 through or yeah a0 through j9 
and then your cancel ship button and then enter and fire button and then your display here for when you have a hit that's going to light up uh, one minor difference between this and the uh, more popular version of the game is that the grid is numbered uh, it's still lettered a through j but it's numbered zero through nine whereas the Milton Bradley version would have been numbered one through ten. So there's a little minor difference. And if you're used to playing one through ten, you would have you would have to get used to that. Going around to the other side, this is the player one side, and you're gonna notice uh, uh, a couple more buttons on this side. Actually, let me uh, angle this out so we can look at the controls a little better. Okay, so here we can see a closer look at our control panel and also the ships. And we'll go through those real quick. You've got your five peg battleship right there. Not battleship, I'm sorry, your carrier, uh, which is five pegs. Your actual battleship, which is going to be four pegs. You've got two of these uh, destroyers, which are three pegs each. So you don't get a submarine with this one. It's uh, uh, two destroyers. Put those back in. And then, of course, we get our two spot patrol boat, which is usually the hardest one to find. And then, of course, over on this side, on the controls, we've got the on-off button. And uh, we've got a couple more buttons, or sorry, on-off switch. And we got a couple more buttons than we did on the other side. So we still have our A0 through J9. We have our cancel ship, and we have our enter or fire button. We also have start. We have mode select, and we have verify, so that we can pick out the different games that we want to play. Now, I'm going to show you how to program for the traditional game, um, where you're going to program your ships, program the other, uh, the other player programs their ships, and you can get started. Or if you want to play one player, all you have to do is program your ships and then start and you're ready to go. The other uh, side or the computer is going to automatically program their ships and start the game right away. So we're going to turn it on and we're going to get a little tune uh, that's a little reminiscent of the uh, National Anthem. And then right away, we're going to go into that sonar sound there. So that's the sonar is telling us that it is ready. So at this point, we're ready to start placing ships. So if I've placed my ships like such, let's go ahead and put these just randomly. Again, we don't get the random um, automated programming for this one. You have to program your ships. And so let's go with this. And I'm going to back up just a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to start by entering my first ship. My patrol boat up here is on A7 and B7. So all I'm going to do is enter the first and last coordinate for each of my ships. So A7 and B7. And watch what happens on this screen here. A7 and then B7. And that's my first ship. And we're going to continue doing that for the rest of our ship. So the next ship is on B4 and D4. So B4, D4, enter. If you make a mistake before you enter, before you hit the enter button, not a problem. Just hit the four uh, coordinates for, or rather the two coordinates for your ship, right? So if I made a mistake here before I hit enter, I could just simply, uh, let's say I entered B3 and D3. Before I hit enter, I would just simply enter B4, D4, enter, and that was it. If I have already entered the ship, then I would use the cancel button, cancel out the ship, and then re-enter it. So my next ship is going to be F0 through F3. 0 through F3, enter. Now you'll notice that it's, I can see my on my screen here, and I can confirm where my ships are going. Now the second player can wait until I'm done or they can start entering their ships right away. As soon as they enter their first coordinate, this, is, this display will shut off and it's not gonna show anymore my coordinates and of course it's not gonna show me the other player's coordinates. So each player can enter the ships, take turns entering their ships or they can both do it at the same time. So my next ship is gonna be G5 through G7. And then finally I0 through I4. Again, at this point, if the other player wants to start entering, they can enter them. And once we're all ready, uh, all we're going to do is hit start and enter. If I want to play a one player game, I can simply press start and enter and we're ready to go. And that sonar indicates that I'm ready to fire. So I'm going to fire my first shot at uh, E4. And you can see right there is going to show me where I'm firing. And that's a hit. So you can see how this just lit up. I've got my ship there. And it's confirming where I hit. 
and now it's showing me where the computer just shot. So the computer just shot at me at H7, which I don't have anything there. When I get hit, it's going to uh, show me. Also, it's going to light up. It's going to have the explosion sound, and it's also going to tell me where it hit. So I'll know exactly which ship to hit. So we'll continue playing this way, and when the ship gets sunk, it's also going to give us an alarm sound to indicate that we've uh, sunk a ship that way you don't have to continue firing around the same area and you can move on to look for another ship at a different location so let's try e5 so that was a miss he just missed that i7 so now i'm gonna try d4 that was a hit and we continue playing along traditional um, C battle style. Let's try C4 next. I want to show you the sound that it makes when the ship sinks. That was a C4. One thing that I really love about the way this display lights up is not only that it display it lights up super bright, but the LED is really far inside here. So the, the way I have the camera angled right now, you can really see where the LED is at, but typically the way you're sitting, the angle that you're sitting at, you don't get to see the LED. So you just see the whole display light up because the LED is really far in there. And I, I love the fact that it lights up so bright and it stays lit. For a while again i thought that was better that they did it better here than the way milton bradley did it let's try b4 all right that was a miss so we've either have we, we've either got the battleship or the carrier so we'll find out f4 Okay, so this is the carrier, so one more hit should sink this, unless he's uh, programmed uh, two ships here somehow. So let's find out. G4. Put that there preemptively. Okay, so that alarm indicates that I have sunk one of my opponent's ships, so I don't need to continue firing around this. I can move on and start looking for a different ship in a different area. And from here, the game will just continue. Either Whether you're playing it one player or two player, you will just continue until you get to the end. When you get to the end of the game, it's actually going to give you a score based on the amount of ships you have left how many misses and how many hits you've scored you're actually going to get a score and it'll play uh, a, a little tune again it'll play like the national anthem uh, tune to indicate the end of the game okay so i've got one shot left i'm going to fire right here at h6 this should be the end of the game Alarm indicates that the ship has been sunk. And the anthem indicates that the game is over. So now, if I want to see my score, I'm going to hit the enter button. And it's going to display my score right here on the screen. So again, very, very cool version of this game. I hope that this has been uh, helpful for some of you folks out there. I know that there's a lot of folks out there that have this version of the game and uh, don't know how to program it, don't know how to use it, don't even know if the one that they have works correctly. And that's kind of why I wanted to make this as a tutorial or, or a helpful video. Uh, for those of you that don't know how to program it, now you do. It's very, very simple. Place your ships, whether it be one player or two player, place your ships, turn it on, start entering coordinates. First coordinate, last coordinate, enter, and then your next ships, first coordinate, last coordinate, enter. You can do it, then the second player can do it, or you can both do it at the same time. When you're done entering your coordinates, you simply press start and enter, and the game is going to start. If you're playing by yourself, 
turn it on same thing first coordinate last coordinate enter repeat for the next four ships press start press enter and you're playing the one player game when you get to the end you get the tune you get your score and when you're ready to start over you press enter and you're ready to go so there's one last look at the radio shack electronic sea battle let me know what you thought of this game done in the description below give me some thumbs up subscribe and hit that bell icon so you're notified when i upload a new video i've got that donate button if you want to hit on that i certainly would appreciate it share with your friends if you like what you see and i'll talk to you next time